My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in godly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and have become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfil the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. James chapter 2 Verses 1 to 9. This is very poignant in this adulterous day and age. Absolutely adulterous. Everywhere you look, there is adultery on every hand. There is idol worship on every hand. A departing away from the Lord. The Lord God. Our maker and creator. Even those two terms are never heard in our day. Creator and maker. Who is God? Today, amongst Christendom, we find men and women applauded, worshipped, adored, given place to. And it is equally so when we come down to what is known as Protestantism. Look at Protestantism. Oh, some have just turned off. You're criticising Protestantism. And so they will go on and on and on. Nobody is criticising Protestantism. So calm down. Okay. But Protestantism has been corrupted. Like politics has been corrupted. Okay, so we don't have politics these days. We don't have Protestantism these days. The seed is still there. Of both. In Protestantism, there is now idolatry of the worst kind, putting men on pedestals, worshipping them. And of course, the Protestant, who claims to be a Protestant, says, Oh, no, 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 just honouring them. You go to the Church of Rome. 
And you say, well, look at that idol there, that figurine, that alabaster figurine. Why are you worshipping them? Not worshipping them, but honouring them. So what's the difference between corrupted Protestantism and the system of Antichrist? The spirit is the same. When you corrupt Protestantism, you corrupt something that is pure. There's nothing wrong with Protestantism. It defines godliness, uprightness. Go back to the original. It is integrity. Protestantism is integrity. But there's no integrity now. With this pseudo, there can't be any pseudo Protestantism. You've got, we've got names now, haven't we? Of persons. Oh, look at this person here, and look at that person there. They've got a PhD, and they've got this, and they've got that, and they've got the other. And God just sits back and laughs the whole lot to scorn. Do you know? At the end of the day, I am no different than you. I may have all the qualifications under heaven. I'm still no different than you. There is a level playing field, so to speak, with God. Everybody, absolutely everybody, is equal in status as being created of God. We go on, or should go on, to rise above ourselves, to exercise ourselves, to educate ourselves, to be better persons than we begin our lives to be. From the cradle to the grave, educating, mm, being educated. It is wickedness before God to be in an assembly and to see somebody brought up on what we call a stage, a pulpit, and the man applauded. Put there as a figure, you could trust him. That's the world. Oh yeah, you could trust him. Says the so-called minister. Listen to what this man has to say. Wholly trust him. No. No. Absolutely not. That's idolatry. And they shake their hands and they have a cup of tea after and they're all in this little conclave. What is all that about? That's not Christianity. The Puritans came out. Did they not out of the Church of England? Because they saw this that the Church of England wanted a separation between the pulpit and the people. That the ministers should be above the people. They didn't want that. They rejected that and they put their own livelihoods and lives and families at risk. They came out. God honoured them. There is no difference between any of us, we're all sitting around the same table and there's only one person that is to be honoured at the top of the table and that's Jesus Christ the Lord. It's awful. Have you ever gone into these meeting houses? These so-called houses of God, houses of prayer and walked out? Because of the idolatry. 
of a minister, so-called, introducing another man. Oh, he's the man, he's the man. No, no, that's not on. That is not on. That is not Christianity. That is the world. That is the fashion of the world. Idolising men. Placing themselves like Nimrod before God. Oh, and they'll contend, and they'll contend this and they'll contend that in order to uphold this practice, this ungodly practice, this irreverence. And you know, where that is happening, God is not present. And there's every evil under the sun there. And what is more, you can be certain that the person who is being brought onto the stage in a meeting house, 99.9.9 recurring percent, they're nominal Christians. In all the meeting houses that I've been in and seen people introduced as being the fantastic one, oh, there's there been no presence of God with them. And it's just baleful, dry, Terms that they come out with and expressions. And people love to have it so. These foolish virgins are passed off as wise virgins. But there's coming a time when God will stir. And there will be a cry made at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and go ye out to meet them, meet him. And then the wise shall see the foolish, and the foolish shall see the wise. And that great gulf between them shall be made, be made manifest. A great gulf. Isn't it not sickening? That ministers of so-called Protestantism <laughs> shake their hands and smile and, and pat on the back their little favourites. And who are their favourites? Arminians. Oh yes, they'll have the uh, occasional person who believes in election unto salvation. But the person believing election unto salvation is no meaning in the, in the end. Because how did they come in? Tell me, how did they come in? Through the door of Arminianism, not through the door of Christ and election. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's like this. If you were to go to a library and take off the shelf an encyclopedia and read about justification by faith, you could be well mistaken for the author of that article to be a saved person. But they're just academics. And it's same with the pulpits. People can stand in a pulpit and go through total depravity, unlimited favour. Okay. Sorry. Um, total depravity, unmerited favour, limited atonement, hmm? irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints, the fall. They can go through the Bible stories of the Old Testament and New Testament. They can do the whole thing. 
and yet be outside of justification by faith because they come through the door. With an encyclopedia, it's simply academia. Unfortunately today, there are many more gullible people behind pulpits and in pews that will take that academia if you presented it not as from the encyclopedia but from yourself they'll accept you as being saved because you've spoken the right words <laughs> hmm? and maybe we just touch upon an, an issue here okay confessions of faith that the Puritans put forward and laid down. They should be examined in the light of what they had. They're not going to be 100%, but they're as good as. Now, when you take the Confessions of Faith, Westminster Confession and Belgique Confession, etc. And you go into one of these so-called houses of God. Look on the wall. Their confession of faith. You might as well blow your nose on it. It is so shallow that it means when you read it, anything to anybody. The Arminian has no problem with it. The present day so-called Protestant will have no, no problem with it. It's only those who have matured in the faith and who are growing to mature in the faith can see the problem. There's no theology behind the confessions of faith. There is in the catechisms. Isn't there? There is in the 39 articles of the daughter of that monster, Romanism. No, no, no it's open to interpretation. It's done that deliberately. Done that deliberately. Open to interpretation all these so-called confessions of faith. And people turn around and say, oh, I believe in election, when they're preaching Arminianism. Ian Paisley was one for that. A prime example. And he was made a prime example for us to learn from. To see that people can actually get in the pulpit, say one thing, oh, I confess the one thing, and then preach another. And that's what James is doing here. James is pointing out here, you're saying one thing and you're doing another. Double-minded, hypocrisy, but I'm still going to call you brethren until you come to the point where I can't call you brethren anymore, James intimates. Because these are, he's allowing these persons the benefit of the doubt. They're early in the faith. Let us see what they grow to. Are they going to wither and die? Hmm? There's branches outside the vine? Or are they going to grow because they are in the vine? Hey? Eh? Should never have any respect to persons. None whatsoever. Feigned honour or honour of any type. Sorry. Towards our fellow man for their learning is one thing oh I mean you respect a person don't idolize them you respect them and they are to respect you in turn for what you are it works both ways in society this godless wicked world that we live in that lies in sin 
There is a division. Those that have learning, not all of them, but it always appears the vast majority of them saunt around, I'm better than you. Oh, well that's a godless stand for starters. Those persons, if they have the knowledge, the wisdom that they should have, and respect therefore that they should have, they should honour those of low estate, even as those of low estate should honour them for their learning. Because we're all God's creatures. It's a respect. It's not to be any other. And of course, respect is taken away when a person shows disrespect because they're not being respectful. If you're a bureaucrat or an officer of the law, say a judge, police officer, whatever, does not follow their office, they've not only brought their office into disrepute, but themselves. We give them the benefit of the doubt, you see, but they must show us that they are to be respected by what they do. And another thing, when in society an official will do something that is totally, utterly dishonourable and you pull them up about it, they'll always turn the tables 